when I made it back up to third, I'm like, oh, woohoo. Racing is absolutely it. There's no plan B. When Caleb passed me on the straight, I thought it was all over, but I managed to fight back. The goal every year is to keep on winning. The more we do that, the more we get to progress upwards. The opportunity that I've been given, it needs absolutely everything put into it. That's why there's never really been a, another option. I always love coming back home. It's my favourite place in the world. During the season when we're racing, we're all busy and it's sort of a different atmosphere. When I'm home, it's making the most of, of being with family and friends, catching up with all my mates as well. And I have obviously quite a big family, so with everything that goes on in my life now, I really enjoy spending time with everybody. When you're doing this kind of stuff, you're not thinking about racing so much. It's important to try and take your focus off the racing because when you think about it 24-7, it can definitely start to affect you and the pressure starts to build up and it's just not really good for you. So this is some footage of Liam when he was probably about three or four, I think it is, when he's jumping on his mate's four-wheel bike. You'll see that he loves speed. This was before he got into go-karting and he is just mad on anything with wheels. Liam, Liam, wait. No time to waste. <laughs> straight on. And straight on the gas pedal. In Why fact, sometimes Chris, my mate, in, one, in times he pulled him off it because he was just too, <laughs> a little bit too dangerous, a little bit too scary. He was never afraid of speed, no matter what it was. So this is Liam's first time at a go-kart, and he would have been six and he, he learned on that track for years. And his helmet's obviously way bigger than his head. But all he wanted to do after his first time in it was get back in it. And after that, we spent every weekend there. I grew up doing this. When I left, it wasn't really actually my decision. It was my dad's. You know, we always knew that I wanted to race cars and that was the, the dream. But obviously a 12 year old doesn't know when the right time is to leave karting, so he made that decision and I remember being real gutted about it, so it's pretty cool to, to come back. It's nice to know I still got it a little bit, which is cool. In terms of competitiveness, he's off the scale. It's only about winning, nothing else matters. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. I've always been competitive and this weekend, coming into it, I wasn't really sure how we were gonna go. We did the test earlier in the week and I was like, I'd just be happy to race mid pack and be happy to, to drive around, you know, and then we get out there for quality and it was just game on. I can't really help it. Anything that I'm doing gets super competitive. I mean, she managed to win all the races over the weekend in both classes. He always said I wanted to be a Formula One driver. That's my, my goal. You know, and people would say to him, that's unachievable, you know, you're not going to do that. Things have happened so quickly for him and for us. It's been sometimes difficult to comprehend and you pinch yourself to say, well, he's a Red Bull driver. He's been offered a chance to run in Formula 2. He's running in DTM. I mean, these are, these are dreams for these kids. I'm just proud of the fact that he's going out there and trying to achieve his goal. My family's been amazing since, since day one. When I was younger, I didn't really realise so much. So looking back now, I'm extremely thankful to, to have the family that I do because they've been amazing to me. I think probably most mums will agree, you know, when you have your kids and you think you've got them for quite some time, but at 16 years old he went overseas to Europe and pretty much you, you're kind of not parenting them anymore because they're not here, so um, yeah, it's pretty tough. Yeah, I miss them a lot. It's, it's pretty hard. We do not have enough space. We've got trophies in all rooms and in the cupboards and in boxes and we're just continually updating them and putting some aside and the, the smaller ones get shuffled out and the bigger ones come in. It's thin slices. I know how to do it. I want thin. I know how to do it. So I this is a really thin sharp slices. Thin, thin so slices. Not fingers out, fingers in. Mum, I watched what you did. 
He just takes it in his stride. You know, this year's going to be massive year for him. DTM's huge in Europe. Formula 2 is huge in Europe. And he's just, you know, he's got a job to do. And he's going to go and he'll just, he'll do his job. He'll do the best he can and he gets on with it. Okay. Excellent. What am I going to do with those? <coughs> So this is, well it's my room, it's also my simulator in here. How much time I spend on it is normally quite a lot, probably too much time to be fair. As it's right next to my bed, I can just pile on out of bed and get straight into this thing. So it is really, really good training, especially now with all our testings limited. So every time you step up into a new car, that steps up in a whole new weight. When I jumped in the F2 car, I sort of prepared for most of the things that I was expecting, like the steering was going to be a lot heavier, the power, having an extra 300 something horsepower was going to be a lot more as well. But one thing I didn't expect was the, the braking. I'm barreling on in at 310 kilometers an hour. And when I hit the brake pedal, my head just dropped straight down. I couldn't even see the corner. So I turned in for the corner, not even looking where I was going. I just didn't expect the savageness of the, the brake pedal to be like that. And it's crazy how quickly everything becomes normal and, and natural and you don't actually think about all the stuff that you were thinking about initially. Roden Cars is a New Zealand car manufacturer. I came here for the first time a couple of years ago and drove the Formula 3 car, did a couple of days in prep for going to Europe my first year. It's pretty cool to be able to partner up with them this year and to be representing a New Zealand brand. Formula 2 is a much bigger step. The car is a lot bigger. It feels a lot different to drive and the way the car drives is a lot different. We have an extra nearly 300 horsepower. Power is a lot more savage as well. You can train as much as you like and get really, really fit for something, but to have seat time is, is crucial and I think it's a massive advantage and opportunity for me. This year is pretty exciting. It's a huge opportunity. So we've got FIA Formula 2, which is a big step up from Formula 3, and DTM. Super, super exciting. DTM's a championship that is like the Formula 1 of GT racing nearly. It's, it's massive in Europe. The end goal is Formula 1. Uh, always will be, always has been. Been the dream since I was a kid. I left school when I was 15, so, so I get the piss taken out of me from all my friends all the time about how I don't really have any education. At this level, it needs all of everything we have. My 100% commitment, and so yeah, there's no, there's no backup. Yeah, I just love racing, it's what I've always wanted to do and yeah, I don't see myself doing anything else.